Windows 98 is, to say the least, a masterpiece. There has been no shortage of good press about it ever since its initial release in 1998, and with good reason. For starters, it vastly improved upon the foundations that Windows 95 laid over three years prior. It introduced several major features such as larger hard drive support through the FAT32 file system, better USB support, and most importantly, an improved Windows Explorer among other things. This iteration of Windows took the world by storm upon release in 1998, despite the PR fail that ensued just a month before and made a lasting impact in the technology industry even after it was taken off shelves years later. This video will cover the machine requirements and a basic installation procedure of Windows 98. We will be using 98 second edition in this video, but the same procedure applies to first edition as well. Before we go any further, I would like to announce that all future videos will be produced using the stable version of 86 box compared to the nightly builds that we have used in the past. As of the recording of this video, the current stable version is... Now let's go over the machine requirements for Windows 98. Windows 98's official minimum requirements consist of at least a 486 processor, but for best results, I personally recommend a 75MHz Pentium processor paired with at least 32MB of RAM. I will be using a Socket 7 i430FX motherboard with a 100MHz Pentium and 64MB of RAM. For the display adapter, a particularly solid option is the Diamond Style 64 VRAM, based on the S3 Vision 964, which has been very well supported since Windows for Workgroups 3.11 and is capable of flawlessly driving resolutions such as 1024x768 at full true color. In this machine, however, I will be using the Phoenix S3 Trio 64 with 4 MB of VRAM. Mouse choice is rather easy. Serial mice are best suited for anything 486 and older. A standard PS2 mouse is best for anything Pentium and newer. I guess you already know which one I'm going to pick here. For the sound card, I will make the same case for the Sound Blaster 16 and highlight its phenomenal support from Windows 2.1 onwards. In this machine, however, I will be using the Sound Blaster AWE32. The only thing I would really change here is the onboard RAM, of which I would recommend at least 2 megabytes. For the MIDI out device, system MIDI works fine if you're on Windows. Now, you would most likely want your 86 box machine to have access to the internet, even though most websites have radically evolved over the years and dropped support for older browsers. But I presume that's not going to stop you at all. Select Slurp as the network type and choose the AMD PCNet PCI2. It's a robust network adapter that requires no additional configuration. For storage, set the hard drive and floppy drive controllers to internal and create a hard drive image of at least 500 megabytes on the IDE bus in channel 0:0. I will be creating a 2 gigabyte VHD image for this machine, but choose what suits your needs. I don't need to emphasize the importance of a CD-ROM drive here as this was the only way Windows 98 Second Edition was released. You could, of course, install Windows 98 First Edition from floppy disks, as I did when I was 11 years old and had an internet connection slower than molasses, but, but, do you really want to go through that? ATAPI bus, channel 1 colon 0, and at least a 32 times speed. For the floppy disks, I usually do two 3.5 inch 1.44 megabyte drives, or one 3.5 inch drive and a 5 and a quarter inch drive. Optionally, you can turn the postcard on to learn about BIOS postcodes, because that was a thing back then. Now that our machine is configured, let's get to installing Windows 98. Most machines in 86 box use either the award or AMI BIOS. In the case of the Asus, um, <clears throat> P slash I dash P54 TP4 XE, it is using a ward. I particularly prefer a ward due to the consistency of the UI and how easy it is to navigate. In the standard CMOS setup page, set primary and secondary master to auto and the rest to none, and make sure to configure your floppy drives based on the two first drives you chose in the machine setup. In the BIOS feature setup page, set antivirus protection to disabled and the boot order to A CD ROM C. Before exiting the BIOS, find your Windows 98 CD, which should be bootable, by the way, and insert it into the machine, and then save and exit. At this menu, choose Boot from CD-ROM and start Windows 98 Setup from CD-ROM. When you get to the ever so familiar setup screen, make sure you select Yes Enable Large Disk Support as it allows the use of larger hard drives. I mean, 
why wouldn't you? Now the machine will reboot, format the hard drive, run a quick scan disk test, and here we are in Windows 98 setup. Now, what you choose in the setup options is entirely up to you. I usually choose custom and select what I need down the line. The rest of the setup process from that point on is quite straightforward. Choose what you want until it's ready to start copying files. And now is your time to get up and stretch, hydrate, whatever self-care routine you're into while Windows installs. Okay, so the file copying process is complete and the computer has restarted. This time around, select boot from hard disk, enter your name, accept the license agreement, and enter your product key if you have one, or know where to look. But wait, there's more setup to do. Might as well go back to your self-care routine. Oh, um, it, it has to restart again. Like, I, I've lost count of how many times it's, it's had to restart, like... I can can I just use computer already or something? But this time, we're at the login screen. We didn't get the chance to set a password during setup, so just press enter. By the way, be sure to keep the Windows 98 CD inserted so that Windows can source the built-in drivers it needs for the hardware. Oh. Okay, sure. Go ahead. And here we are, at the good old Windows 98 desktop. Oh, <laughs> I almost forgot about this. Do you remember this? Now, as you can see, our default screen resolution is a shockingly small 640 by 480. Thankfully, changing the resolution is simple. Right click on the desktop, select properties, go to the settings tab, drag the slider in screen area and change the colors as so desired. I think 800 by 600 may be fine for this video. There we are. Now you can connect to the internet and browse the web with Windows 98, albeit to a limited extent because of how much the internet has evolved since the late 90s. This is no issue though, because all we have to do is double click connect to the internet on the desktop and... Oh... You... This MSN Internet Access Setup Wizard works only for dial-up which is not emulated in 86 box. You will most likely encounter it in Windows versions like ME when you try to set up internet access. In order to use LAN to connect to the internet, go to Internet Options in Control Panel, navigate to the Connections tab, and click Setup. There we go! Select Connect Your Local Area Network for this screen and the next, leave the proxy settings as is, no internet mail account, and you're done. And surprise, surprise, Google still works on Internet Explorer 5. And Nathan Lineback's Toasty Tech website, well, works too. You can upgrade Internet Explorer to version 6 if you'd like, though there won't be much of a difference given how antiquated that is as well. And yes, 86box's website does work in IE6, and honestly, it doesn't look half bad. Now, if you want to work towards turning your Windows 98 installation into an Office workstation of its time, you definitely can. Office XP is the last Microsoft Office version to officially support Windows 98, and you can do things such as write documents and stuff. And as per usual, you can invest your time in a relaxing game of solitaire. Man, that was fast. 
Before I go, I do want to clarify something that I suppose everyone knew already. Windows 98 has a shutdown sound that's not enabled by default for some unknown reason. So, if you wish to end your day in style, here it goes. So, what can I say about Windows 98? Some may say it's what 95 should have been from the start. Others may call it a much needed overhaul. I personally think that 95 and 98 have their own unique charms that set them apart. Windows 95 was the beginning of something new. 98 took what 95 had started and perfected it. In a sense, 95 walked so 98 could run. The ease of use, the nostalgia, the performance, all of those factors made Windows 98 an OS to remember. Enjoy using Windows 98 in 86 box. And as always, happy emulation. Thank you for watching.